I'm Dr. Rajshreena Budripad, and today's video is all about menopause and hormone replacement therapy. Menopause is caused by a significant drop in hormone levels. It's defined by the absence of periods for about one year, and the average age is 51. In the United States, 1.3 million women transition to menopause each year. The sudden drop in hormones can cause a lot of symptoms, such as fatigue, mood swings, which include anxiety, depression, even panic attacks. It can cause insomnia, low libido, brain fog and memory lapses, hair loss, joint pain, and weight gain. Sometimes a woman may feel like they're losing their mind and they're going crazy. They just don't feel like themselves. Their significant other and their family may notice the symptoms too. Now, did I mention hot flashes? This is probably one of the most unbearable symptoms of menopause, where a woman feels like they're burning up and they just can't function at work or get any sleep. No one wants to go from being a juicy grape to a dried up raisin, but that's what happens in menopause. When your estrogen tanks, this can lead to dry skin, vaginal dryness, skin wrinkling and sagging, and overall accelerated aging, which is not fun. The great news is that bioidentical hormone replacement can really ease the transition to menopause and improve all of these symptoms and quality of life. But many of you may be wondering, are hormones safe? So let's go over the pros and cons. Let's start with the pros. So estrogen is the power hormone. With the help of estrogen, you can go from being a shriveled up raisin back to a juicy grape. And like these two beautiful women, estrogen can give you soft, glowing skin. It can stabilize and improve your mood. It can improve your mental sharpness and memory. It'll put an end to all those miserable hot flashes. It can help bring back your libido. And estrogen is also good for your bones as well as your heart. So overall, estrogen helps you feel healthier, more energetic and youthful. I know estrogen sounds fabulous. But just like the balance of yin and yang in Chinese medicine, estrogen, which is the yang hormone, has to be balanced by progesterone, which is the yin hormone. So progesterone is the calming hormone. It can help to improve the quality of your sleep, and it can also help to reduce anxiety and stabilize your mood. Progesterone can also help to lower your blood pressure and relax your muscles. So in many ways, hormone replacement can really improve your quality of life and symptoms, but there's some important safety measures I recommend. First, it's important to find a qualified provider who is trained in prescribing bioidentical hormones because a lot of the latest advances are not covered in medical school or residency. I recommend providers like myself who have been trained by the American Academy for Anti-Aging Medicine who are up to date with the latest guidelines on prescribing bioidentical hormones. You want to make sure you get a yearly mammogram and an additional ultrasound if you have dense breasts. It's important that your provider is monitoring your symptoms as well as your blood levels of hormones. I recommend hormone holidays, which I'll describe later in this video. And I recommend being on the lowest dose possible to improve your quality of life, manage your symptoms, but without causing long-term side effects. You want to be sure to avoid oral estrogen. A lot of the fear surrounding hormone replacement started with the Women's Health Initiative, which was a big study that was originally published in 2002. However, the study was done on synthetic estrogens called conjugated equine estrogens. And when estrogen is taken orally, it gets metabolized through the liver. And this can lead to an increased risk of blood clots, heart attack, stroke, and breast cancer. If you're not familiar with conjugated equine estrogens, these are actually synthetic estrogens that are derived from the urine of pregnant horses. In fact, the brand name Premarin stands for pregnant mare urine. Horse urine has several different kinds of estrogen, but they're all considered synthetic because they're biochemically different from the estrogen in a human female. The great news is we can now use bioidentical hormones, which have the identical chemical structure to hormones made in the human body. I want to clarify that bioidentical does not mean that it has to be plant-derived. The main definition of bioidentical is simply that it has the identical chemical structure to hormones made in the human body. 
Did you know that human females actually have three different types of estrogen? Estrone is E1 and it's made by fat cells. It's considered harmful on breast tissue, so we never replace this type of estrogen. This is why it's important to maintain a healthy weight so that you can keep your estrone levels down and reduce your risk of breast cancer. Estradiol, also known as E2, is the power hormone. So when I was talking about all the wonderful health benefits of estrogen in a woman, I was referring to estradiol. Estriol, or E3, is a much weaker form of estrogen. It actually mainly functions during pregnancy, but in menopause, some women find it helpful for vaginal dryness. When we check your estrogen levels on your blood work, we're referring to estradiol, which again is the power hormone and responsible for managing most of the symptoms of menopause. The safest way to use estrogen is transdermally. This means it gets absorbed through the skin, either as a cream or a patch, allowing it to bypass the liver. This avoids the whole problem of the liver metabolizing estrogen and increasing clotting factors. So overall, transdermal estrogens are considered a lot safer and have a lot lower risks, so they're the preferred form in bioidentical hormone replacement. Another huge advancement in hormone safety has been the use of bioidentical progesterone over older synthetic progestins. Progestins are synthetic progesterones. They have a different chemical structure to the progesterone in the human body, and they're considered to be bad on breast tissue. For example, birth control pills have progestins. Once again, the Women's Health Initiative study, which created a lot of fear on hormone replacement, used a synthetic progestin called medroxyprogesterone acetate, also known as Provera. The great news is that bioidentical progesterone is considered protective on breast tissue. And remember, progesterone is the amazing calming hormone that helps women with sleep and anxiety. This is also why we use progesterone in perimenopause to help ease the transition to menopause. So as you can see, there's been tremendous advancement going from the older forms of synthetic oral estrogens and progestins to the newer bioidentical hormones. It's kind of like going from riding a dangerous racehorse to driving a modern car that has airbags and seat belts. When it comes to bioidentical estrogen, there's numerous ways to prescribe it. I've been practicing now for over 10 years, and these are two of the most popular options among my patients. The estradiol patch is a really convenient option because it's like a tiny sticker you apply on your lower abdomen and change twice a week. The great news with the patch is it's FDA approved and covered by insurance, and it's available at your local commercial pharmacy. The nice thing with the patch is it keeps your estradiol levels pretty consistent day and night, and I find the blood levels to be pretty accurate. The other popular option is a biased cream. Biased means it has two types of estrogens. It's usually 80% estriol or E3 and 20% estradiol or E2. The estrogens in biased are plant derived from yams. The downside is it has a short half-life, so it has to be applied daily. These creams come in convenient click devices where you apply a tiny amount to the inner labia every day. The inner labia has excellent absorption, so we're able to use really low doses, and it also helps with vaginal dryness. The downside is it's not covered by insurance, and it has to be made at a specialty compounding pharmacy. I also find that lab values fluctuate, so we have to combine symptoms along with the lab values to make decisions on adjusting the dose. I want to emphasize that both of these options are bioidentical. Now let's talk about the options for bioidentical progesterone. Contrary to estrogen, bioidentical progesterone is safe when taken orally. When the liver metabolizes oral progesterone, the byproducts are actually sedating and calming, so it can help with sleep and anxiety. Progesterone comes in two forms, regular progesterone and sustained release progesterone. Regular release progesterone is better for falling asleep, whereas sustained release progesterone is released slowly over the course of the night so it helps you stay asleep. The great news is regular release progesterone is FDA approved, so it's usually covered by insurance and available at commercial pharmacies. It does, however, have a tiny bit of peanut oil filler, so it's good to be aware of this in case you have an allergy. The sustained release progesterones have to be made at specialty compounding pharmacies, so there is some out-of-pocket cost. The nice thing is sustained release progesterone can be made at any dose possible and without any peanut oil filler. Once again, both of these options are bioidentical. 
If you're on any form of estrogen, it's really important that it's balanced with progesterone. Progesterone is protective on both breast and uterine tissue. Another way to improve the safety of hormones is to use hormone holidays. I have my patients take three to five days off their estrogen at the beginning of the month and five days off their progesterone at the end of the month. This allows your body to clear out all the hormones and it leads to the formation of new receptors. If you think about younger premenopausal women, their hormones are cycling every month. As the hormone levels go up and down, it triggers the body to create new receptors. So it makes sense to use a similar concept in menopausal women. This approach makes the hormone regimen safer and more effective long term. Now what about testosterone? Testosterone is what I consider optional, meaning not all women really need it. A lot of times, once the estradiol and progesterone are balanced, a woman is already feeling great, and estradiol actually influences libido as well. But some women do find that a low dose of testosterone cream can help their libido, mood, and muscle mass. Unfortunately, there's no FDA-approved testosterone for women, so it has to be made at a specialty compounding pharmacy, which means it's an out-of-pocket cost. If the dose of testosterone is too high, the side effects include acne, facial hair, mood swings, as well as hair loss. That's why we monitor both the symptoms and lab values. Next we have DHEA, also known as the good adrenal hormone or the anti-aging hormone. Some call it the mother of all hormones because your body can use it to make other hormones. Optimizing your DHEA level can be really good for your brain, memory, and mental sharpness. As the good adrenal hormone, DHEA helps to balance and counteract the negative effects of cortisol, which is the bad stress hormone. DHEA comes as an oral capsule and it's often paired with its precursor called pregnenolone. Depending on the dose, it can be available over the counter or made at a specialty compounding pharmacy. For most people, hormone replacement can be done quite safely with a doctor's guidance, but there are certain situations where we want to avoid hormone. If you have a personal history of breast cancer, especially a hormone-sensitive cancer, you should definitely avoid hormones. If you have a family history of breast cancer in a first-degree relative like your mother or sister, then we have to weigh carefully the risks and benefits of hormone replacement. Finally, if you have a personal history of blood clots, it's best to avoid hormones as well. In my practice, I like to create a personalized hormone regimen for my patients. Every patient is unique, so dosing has to be based on symptoms as well as labs. Follow-up is every three to six months, and I adjust the dose based on their response in their symptoms as well as their labs. So it's important to work with your doctor to find your ideal doses. Now hormones are just one piece of the puzzle. In order to be your healthiest, you have to eat well, exercise, Take your vitamins and manage your stress. Clean eating is really important because food impacts your hormones as well as your symptoms. I recommend a clean, organic, whole foods diet with plenty of vegetables and you also want to stay hydrated by drinking plenty of water. It's best to minimize sugar, alcohol, and high carb meals because these types of foods can actually trigger a hot flash and affect your sleep. Exercise is also super important. It helps to improve your mood, improves the quality of your sleep, helps you to maintain your muscle mass, and it also naturally raises the levels of human growth hormone, which is an anti-aging hormone. So the great news is you can actually feel your healthiest in menopause. You can be productive and enjoy your best life. Please leave your questions and comments below. I'd love to hear from you all. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Please share it with your friends and family. Thank you again and have a wonderful day.